check one, two. We get feed. All right. Good morning, everybody. We're glad you're here, and we'll see you soon. So hang tight. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for being here this morning. My name is Dee Dee Wood, and I'm one of your pastors at Hope Vineyard Church, and uh, along with my husband, Jim. 
and we are very happy to be celebrating Jesus with you today. We have um, would like to encourage you to um, go ahead and say hi in the announcements. And if you haven't liked us on Instagram or Facebook or checked out the YouTube t channel, go ahead and um, do that sometime so that you can stay connected with us. And, um, and it's always good to, to see your comments and to say hi and to interact online um, even during the, the messages. And if, again, if you have any prayer requests or have anything exciting that God, you know, good God's, neat God sightings, then please post those on, um, you know, as in the comments as well. Or you can just um, message us directly. And now I would like to invite Jim up and he's gonna share with us this morning. Good morning. Thank you, Didi. How did everybody handle this uh, this storm? I know here in Paxton it was a big nothing burger. Nothing happened here other than we got a little bit of slush, more slush than, than snow. Uh, I imagine in Harlan, Iowa, uh, there's a whole lot more snow than what we've gotten. Right, Gina? I bet you are probably still shoveling out. Uh, but no matter where you are, we're glad that you're here and have joined us for this time this morning on this uh, last Sunday of January. This year is flying by. It, it's hard to believe that we're already here and uh, we're going to celebrate. We're going to um, talk a little bit today uh, about Jesus, which is what we do. We come together to worship and, and celebrate. Now, how many of you would consider yourselves computer people? Uh, you like computers, you work you know, work with computers, or you have a pretty good idea of knowing your way around a computer, maybe. Um, surely, over, over time, we've gotten more comfortable with computers. Most of us carry a, a, a dramatically super powerful computer in our pockets with our phones. And uh, many of us interact, our students are using computers right now to uh, connect online and to, to learn and to connect with their teachers and their classrooms in many circumstances, like where I teach. Uh, we have students who are back, um, but it's only a small portion of the population of the school. Most of the students, in fact, all our instruction is happening remotely. Even for those students that are back in school, they log in so that we can all stay connected. So computers are an important part of our lives and help make life easier, but as somebody, uh, if, you've, if you've used a computer any length of time, you know sometimes the computer starts to lag and it, it gets slower and slower and doesn't work quite as effectively as it needs to, right? Maybe, uh, you know, your computer's like that at home, your Wi-Fi often will sometimes cycle through and it comes to a point where it doesn't quite work. And so with your computer, with your modems at home, uh, with other electronic devices. If you seek to troubleshoot what's happening with this, what's one of the first things that text will tell you to do if you're having trouble with your computer? They tell you, unplug it. Have you unplugged it yet? And that's all about resetting it, resetting it so that it works better. And um, if you're a computer person, you understand why that is a problem. If you're not a computer person, uh, you know that that's the best thing you can do to try that first. The first thing you do is try to reset it. Now, during this whole pandemic, which is nearly, uh, it's almost 11 months now that we've been going through this pandemic, I've found myself a lot, many, many days, many days, feeling like a computer in need of a reset. Um, my brain, oftentimes I, I'll be far, I just, it just feels like my brain is foggy and don't quite, uh, doesn't quite work as well it, as it needs to. I feel less productive. Um, during this time, you know, I have two jobs. I'm a pastor here at Hope Vineyard Church. I'm a full-time teacher at Urbana Middle School in Urbana. And I feel like, you know, most of the time I'm not doing either of those jobs really well. It's, it's more just more like I'm, th I'm surviving rather than thriving. And I, I see this in the students who have returned to school. We have a, a small portion of the student population, uh, about 15% uh, of the students have returned. 
we have over over a thousand students who come to the school, so it's it's a huge school. Um, but only about 150 have returned, and these are students who really need some extra help. But I've noticed in interacting with these students that um, I would say the same kind of dynamic is with them. There's there's just this this depression. Uh, there's a a need for resetting, and uh, I, spe I suspect some of you can relate to this too. This feeling of not feeling all there or feeling distracted, feeling like I just I'm just not as productive as I need to be. Um, the truth is, we all need to reset ourselves more often than we realize. We need to approach our lives with a sense of resetting. And it's not just because it's a pandemic, although that has highlighted this. Resetting our lives is so important and, uh, and part of how God has made us. It's one of the reasons why we are supposed to get at least seven or eight hours of sleep every day. That's part of the resetting process of how God has designed us to be humans, where we reset ourselves by going to sleep. But we need to, we need to uh, be people who seek to be reset by God um, every day because our daily lives are filled with all kinds of opportunities for us to be distracted, to be disoriented, and be disengaged. And we, we need to pursue this sense of resetting. We need to regularly unplug ourselves and reset our spiritual operating systems in order for us to really operate at full capacity the way we're designed to be. But you can't spell reset without rest. In fact, rest and reset are very connected. Resting allows us to be reset. And rest is a key part of uh, God's design for us. And, uh, and, and it's something that he modeled. When we look at Genesis 2, verse 2, we see that after God created all things, uh, the, um, the author is clear to say that God, on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Even God rested and and uh, took a break um, we see that that rest is important to Jesus throughout the gospels we see time and time again that Jesus went off to a quiet place in fact in Mark 1 it says very early in the morning while it was still dark Jesus got up he left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed and so Jesus um, found time to go to a quiet place to find rest and to recharge and reset and and so you know if it's important to God and it's important to God the Father if it's important to Jesus it needs to be important to us too and that's why we're encouraged in the Bible for us to rest and and be reset in fact Psalm 46 says be still and know that I am God today I want to read a passage from Mark's gospel and uh, at first, you might not think it's about rest uh, because it's a very familiar story, but yet I want you to pay attention to this whole thing. I'm, I'm going to read it straight through, and then we'll, we'll um, just look at this and what this means for us. This is Mark 6, uh, verse 31 to 46, and it says this. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. But many people recognized them and saw them leaving, and people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus says, You feed them. With what, they asked, we'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. How much bread do you have? Jesus asked. Go and find out. They came back and reported, We have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the disciples to have people sit in groups on the green grass. And so they sat down in groups of 50 or 100. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. 
They all ate as much as they wanted, and afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. A total of 5,000 men and their families were fed. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and head across the lake to Bethsaida, where he sent the people home. After telling everyone goodbye, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. And so this is a familiar story, no doubt. We have, we have visited it many times in the Gospel of Mark. The feeding of the 5,000 is an incredible miracle. We see crowds clamoring to follow Jesus. They see him, you know, they see him, they follow, they, and they follow, they go after him. At least 5,000 men, women, and children were fed that day with only five loaves of fish and two, or five loaves of bread and two fish. Definitely uh, a miracle because there were plenty of leftovers afterwards too. But it's easy to miss Jesus's quest for rest in the scope of this awesome story. The story starts with uh, Jesus and his disciples trying to seek a quiet place to rest a while. That's what it says. That that's what precipitated going to this area. They were they were trying to find a place to be alone, to to dial down, to reset. Because they, they had been feverishly managing the crowds. It says people were coming and going, and they, were, they didn't even have time to eat. And so this is what is, sets the scene. They're going to try and find a place to unplug. And yet the crowds come, and they come, and they come. And they hadn't planned ahead. They have no food for all these thousands and thousands of people. And Jesus, of course, comes through and has this miracle. But afterwards says, after Jesus said goodbye to everybody, he sends the disciples off across the lake. He sends the crowds home with full bellies. He, um, it says, at the end, he goes up to the hills to be alone and pray. So even after all that time, we see a bookend of this quest for rest of Jesus. On the front end, they try to find the rest after the miracles and the amazing stuff. Again, Jesus prioritizes rest. Rest is a form of self-care, and that's why it needs to be a quest for us as well. When we rest, we're resetting ourselves. We have to take care of ourselves. It's, you know, self-care is a, is a word that's used a lot today, and that's because most of us are not taking care of ourselves. We don't get the amount of sleep we need. We're not eating the right foods. We're um, not watching the right, you know, stuff that, that builds us up. We're spending a whole lot of time worrying about things that are beyond our scope. We, uh, we don't monitor our anxiousness or our mental health is really challenged. And this pandemic is magnifying that even in a more dramatic way. And that's why rest is self-care. It's like we have, to, we have to prioritize this. It's like being on a plane. You know, when they give you all those safety precautions at the beginning of the flight, what do they say when the mass drops down? Uh, don't help your neighbor with that first. You have to put it on yourself first. And that's what self-care is about. If we don't take care of ourselves, we find ourselves out of oxygen. We find ourselves not uh, able to care for ourselves so that we can care for others. Whether you're a parent, whether you have a responsibility at your job, whatever you do, we have to be focused on how are we taking care of ourselves? What uh, and what do we do with that? And rest is a primary part of that. Now, one of the best questions we can ask when uh, to see, like, are we at rest? Are we prioritizing this? Are we taking care of ourselves by allowing ourselves to be reset and resting in Jesus is to ask this question. How is my soul? How is my soul? It's taking stock of, you know, what what is... Uh, you know, the, what has the day been like? Where, what are my worries? What am I focused on? What am I anxious about? Or what, what distractions, what things are distracting me from the very best thing? Um, how is my soul is an excellent question that we should be asking on a daily basis and many times all day long. It's a spiritual form of self-care. And many centuries ago, St. Ignatius uh, devoted himself to helping people <clears throat> care for their interior life. Um, it was important for, um, you know, to seek rest in Jesus, we have to be focused on having an interior life. That is our soul. 
that is at rest and finding rest in him. And we uh, need to be welcoming him to take root and to establish his identity in us um, through his love. And that's part of what all that's about, this developing, cultivating, forming this interior life so that we can be, um, uh, you know, productive, so that we can be fully operational. It's part of that resetting rest process. Um, and so we, we tune ourselves to Jesus in doing this. It's just like the same way when I, when I plug my guitar in on the stage here, I plug it into a device that tunes to a reference pitch. There are it's A440 is the, the reference pitch, and, and it, it's calibrated to that. And my guitar, I calibrate my guitar to the um, electronic tuner so that I can be in tune. Otherwise, it just does not sound good. And in that same way that I tune my guitar to that established reference pitch, our hearts need to be tuned to Jesus because he is our reference pitch. He is the one that our hearts need to be in alignment with um, and we we have to pursue this and Ignatius understood that and he he understood that our souls get distracted and get disoriented in the course of any given day because there's so much that comes at us right whether it's through the social media on the regular news uh, whether it's at our job uh, in our family life the the challenges and drama of what's happening we all need to reset and recalibrate our hearts with Jesus' help day in and day out. Our souls fluctuate oftentimes, don't they? They fluctuate between fear and faith, moment by moment, sometimes many times during the day. But our goal is to pursue the type of rest in Jesus that the psalmist talks about in Psalm 62, where he says, Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. And so when our rest is found in God and God alone, when we seek Jesus and put our resetting uh, along the lines of what he wants for us, we can say that even though storms come, even though uh, the waves batter, he is our rock. He's solid, and we can trust in him. Our souls find rest when they are placed in the care of Jesus. Now, what does the quest for rest look like for us? What does it mean for us to be um, pursuing rest and the rest of Jesus? Well, it doesn't always mean that you just sit and do nothing. I mean, there are times when we're just plain exhausted, right? We're tired, and it feels good to put our feet up, and sit back and relax. Um, That's an important part of resting, that we're not always go, go, go. And if you find yourself exhausted, overwhelmed, that's that's a very good place to start. But it doesn't mean that necessarily. It doesn't always mean um, mindless escapism either. Uh, Sometimes that's helpful when we can just get away and not think about stuff. I know I need that in my life. one of the things that's been really helpful for me during this pandemic is, um, and especially starting this new year, I, I have two big goals for myself. I have a goal of, of playing my guitar every day um, just, just for fun or to learn. And so I keep track of it on my calendar and to read that every day. Um, last, last year, I got away from reading on a daily basis. And so I'm prioritizing that and I'm finding it actually to spend some time reading. Now, I'm not putting limits on either of those things. I'm not saying, well, I'm, I'm going to play guitar for 30 minutes and I'm going to read five chapters a day. I'm just going to do it until it's um, till I find rest in that. And it's part. It, that's been something that I felt led to do this year. Um, but you know, mindless escapism is more like um, you know watching Netflix over and over and over and over again, or playing video games over and over and over again where you're not, um, you're not, uh, you know, you're just escaping. And a lot of people have, I mean, those are, those are okay. You know, those aren't terribly destructive escapism approaches sometimes. They can be, they can be, but um, 
you know, there's other ways to escape that are much more destructive with addiction and, um, and, and other types of coping mechanisms. And definitely not talking about rest as a coping mechanism. I'm talking about a quest for rest that is active and it's participatory. The quest for rest that resets our souls is all of those things. It's active. It's something that we do. It's a verb. Rest is a verb when it's applied to Jesus and when it's applied to who we are. It involves our daily spiritual rhythms that all of us as Christ followers should be engaging in in a daily formation of our lives. Daily prayer, devotional prayer, quiet times with God, reading the Bible every day in the presence of Jesus. And so we do all those things, spiritual rhythms, in the presence of Jesus on a daily basis. That helps to form our interior life. But we, in order to reset our souls, we also have to apply a sense of rest that we see found in Psalm 37, where we are encouraged to be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Be still before Jesus and wait. How do we do this? What does this look like for us? Well, centuries ago, Ignatius developed this uh, tool called the Daily Examine. And it's been used for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years to guide people, to help monitor their interior life, to reflect on the status of our souls. It's, it's a way, a tool of, of asking, how is my soul? And um, it's, it's a way that you can, you can monitor the status of it at the end of the day and prepare our hearts with gratefulness and joy and repentance and hope and trust for the day to come. And so uh, many Christians begin their days with prayer, but oftentimes the end of the day, we're just really tired and we want to go to bed. And so how do we end our day as well as start the day well? Well, this is just one way. The daily examine is just one way to do that. But it's been a, a way that, that millions of Christ followers have utilized in, um, in their walk, in their formation with Jesus. And so I, I just want to go over this a little bit as we wrap things up today to encourage you to perhaps as you quest for rest to utilize the daily examine as a way to help your soul find rest in Jesus. And so at the end of each day, the end of Sunday today, you can try it out tonight. And, and I will post these steps on our Instagram and Facebook page. So that there'll be some pictures that you can go through those and, um, and utilize these steps. Or you can take notes as I go through them uh, briefly this morning. But at the end of your day, before you go to bed, give yourself 10, 15 minutes to this, uh, to do this spiritual exercise as you examine how the day went and so at the end of the day you just find a quiet place away from distraction maybe light a candle to to remind you that Jesus is present in this moment that the Holy Spirit is there to help help you guide through this I mean we believe that the Holy Spirit is always present with us and having that uh, having a candle is a very physical way to remind us of that and then we go through these these five steps the first step is stillness. And so stillness is just simply we just become aware of the presence of God. We quiet ourselves and we quiet our hearts and we begin to just listen. It, you know, you take these deep breaths and you just listen to the Holy Spirit. In this moment, you're becoming present to the presence of Jesus. The second step is gratitude. And so this is about where you review your day. You look back on the day with thankfulness, with gratitude. We're thankful for how the day went. And it's really about seeing, seeing your day, no matter how it went, through a lens of thanksgiving. Appreciating the gifts of God in all of it, even if it didn't go well. What is God showing you, or how did God extend his grace to you in the day? So you reflect back with gratitude. And that's number three is reflection. You become aware of your emotions in this moment where you move into a time of reflection. You start, you know, starting to sense what what is the Holy Spirit showing you about your emotions, both your positive and your negative feelings in this time. 
you reflect on how am I feeling? How is my soul? You reflect perhaps on negative feelings or negative experiences in that day. And, and did you choose Jesus' way in that situation? Did you make him known? Did you share the love of Jesus in that moment? The fourth step is joy and sorrow. And so in this time, as you reflect, you choose one feature of the day and pray about it. Think about one thing that happened, something that you might have encountered or an experience. Uh, it could be positive, a joyful one. It could be something that, um, that was destructive in your life. Rejoice in the success or ask forgiveness for sin. And then, if necessary, make plans to amend. And, uh, and so you, you reflect on, all right, what, what brought joy? What brought sorrow? What do I need to do about it? And then lastly, it's hope. We hope. We look forward to tomorrow. And that's why at the end of the day, this is a really helpful tool for us to put our souls at rest. You look forward to tomorrow. You move forward with expectation. You ask God to shine his light on tomorrow's path for you. And you resolve to grow. And so tomorrow, it's a new day. I can start new. I look forward to what God wants to do with me tomorrow. And that's why we can be people of hope even at the end of our days. And so those, those, five, those five steps help us at the end of the day in the daily examine to uh, s- reset our hearts. And this is something why, you know, this isn't, it's good for us if we do this at all, but it's super important for us to apply this on a daily basis. And it can take as long or as short as you really need to. But actually, but the important thing is you giving yourself to a specific time and become aware of how Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is interacting in your life in this moment. Because Jesus invites us to rest with him. In Matthew 11, Jesus says, Come to me, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. He says, Come, come to me. I will give you rest. He continues. He says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. And so if we don't spend that time with Jesus, he can, he's not going to be able to teach us as well. Uh, if, if we don't spend time with Jesus, we're not going to see his ways. We're not going to experience that rest unless we prioritize doing this. And in the busy and the hustle and bustle and all the stuff that we have going on in life, the very best thing we can do is to rest with him. It's something we get to do with him. That's awesome. But we're not alone. It's through his strength and his power. And that's why the psalmist encourages us to cast our cares upon the Lord because he will sustain us. He says he will never let the righteous be shaken. And I want to encourage you today. In the quest for rest, make your destination Jesus, first and foremost. He'll reset you. He will restore you. He will help your soul not to be, you know, blown by the wind, but to be a rock-solid rock in the midst of all the storms around us. And um, I, I just felt like that's the thing we need to be focused on today because there's so much that can distract us in this time. And so... I just pray that blessing over us right now. Thank you, Lord, for your uh, provision of rest, that you've given us ways to experience your presence um, in these moments. I pray for your Holy Spirit to speak to every heart that's listening, participating in this time of worship this morning. Would you come and uh, reset our hearts so that we can be perfectly in tune with you to see your kingdom come, to see your will be done, to see you move and power, to see you change and answer, change, change our worlds, change our lives, change our families and our job situations and um, lead us in every step. Lord, help us to be people who find our rest first and foremost in you. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for giving during this time. Um, Giving 
uh, during the time of, of the pandemic too, finding ways, making ways to do that regularly. Thank you so much for that. We, um, we truly uh, are grateful for that. So whether you give, whether you're in person here and put it in the box or when you mail it in or do the online giving, thank you for being generous and faithful and sacrificial during this time. And we want to uh, just encourage you to pray about uh, giving in this year 2021 to continue to do that. We're so um, so thankful that we have wonderful partners of in this this family, this church family right here. So thank you for doing that. Now let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, Yours is the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we'll spend some time here just lifting our voices to God. Part of spiritual formation really is found in these times where we're singing as well. Um, the words, you know, we try to... We try to um, uh, program songs, choose songs that are going to be songs that help our hearts to uh, reflect on the truth and find rest in God. And so today, I want to encourage you to reflect on these words. Thank you, if you're in person, for continuing to keep your masks on. If you're not in person and you're out and about, please keep those masks on too. Really important stuff. But we're grateful that we have this time to reflect. And so I want to encourage you to... Sing with us. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who's the holder with holy Of all kings, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be saved. Jesus to sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos? Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nations? truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross to sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Oh, worthy is the King. This is amazing grace. 
Jesus to sing for all that you've done for me. Jesus to sing for all that you've done for me. My times are in your hands. I know I'll never understand without trust in you. Sometimes my heart grows cold. I'm sorry when I take control. I'm needed. Even when I fall, you help me stand. Even when I'm lost, you take my hand. So I will hold. precious King. In all I bow before you, giving all I have, kneeling at your feet, I 
I submit to you. It's just a simple token of my love for you, my precious King. It's just a simple token. It's just a simple token of my love for you, my precious King. Father, thank you for your presence here with us this morning. Thank you that we can um, come before you and lay our whole hearts, that we can rest, that we can allow you to minister to us. Lord, thank you that as we quiet our hearts and our minds, you speak um, your mercies over us. Lord, that you re restore us and renew our lives, renew our vision, renew our trust in you. Father, we thank you that your presence um, doesn't leave us and that it can be you who leads us into the restful places. And so, Lord, we just, um, we take your hand now and we ask that you would continue to lead us into your rest. Father, I ask that you would bless and restore our church family. Lord, that this season of, of you know, 
ongoing questions and confusion and waiting, Lord, will also find us near to you. And as we draw near to you, you can do so much in us. And Lord, we ask that um, you would do that. We just put our faith in you that you are doing a good work in our lives. That we can continue to um, join you in the, in the calling and the commission that you have for us. Lord, thank you for your, your spirit. And thank you for just going with us this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being here with us this morning. And thank you for being online this morning. Um, we will see you next week. If anybody has prayer requests, um, message us. And if anybody would like to receive prayer, we'll be around after the service to pray. Have a great, great week. We'll see you next time. <laughs>